Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to MDLR Fishing. Thank you so much for clicking on the video and tagging along for today's adventure. We're going to get the kayak unloaded, get out there inside one of the bayous because the water is a little bit low. And uh, we're going to try to find some speckled trout, maybe some flounder. This spot, has, it's like notorious for holding some of those guys. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to like tangle up with one keeper. That's the goal. Welcome to Churchill Bayou, everyone. So, you can see right here, lots of low water. We've been long overdue to catch a lot of fish. I don't even care if I catch a gaff top. So honestly, I do care. <laughs> I don't like catching those guys, it's slime everything up. But uh, I'm just hoping that we do lay into some fish. Taking a look at the hummingbird, three feet of water, it should drop here in a second. There's a little hole right here. Look at this, all to the left of the kayak. That's got to be oyster or something right over here. You gotta love the, uh, the sonar. So that right there, that looks really nice and good. I haven't marked any bait fish. I don't see anything yet. But uh, let's get started. Let's pull something out from over here. Um, I want something that's gonna dive down there. We'll start with this little bottom bouncing rig. We used it yesterday, didn't catch not one thing off of it. Here we go, first cast, gotta get that out the way. Four feet, 4.8, almost five right now. Let's let that fella drop. All right, this is gonna be the last cast with this lure right here. And we're gonna downsize to something a tad bit smaller. It's gonna be really tough to cast it into this wind but that's why we got the ultralight rod right here to kind of help us do that. All right, that's it. You've had your shot, buddy. It's time to let somebody else get into the game. There we go. But before we begin, let's put these scissors up before I lose them. This is the secret to attracting the fish right there just get that little portion right there all lathered up with some procure shrimp and we are seriously ready to go let's fight these winds with a bait caster and a super light lure here we go just like that I'm ready I'm ready like Spongebob says all right, here we go. Let's get off of the bank and into some action. There's the thump. Gotcha. A little bitty baby flounder. What I tell y'all about that nursery slam? I ain't shy. Look at that, no spots on him. Let's see if he's gonna, there they go. They're starting to appear. Come on, open the mouth. There you go. Now we can get that lure out and send you on your way so you can get big. Turn from a little potato skin to a big old hot potato. All right, everybody, there it is. Small little six inch potato skin, six inch, six inch potato skin. See if we can run that back up. That, yeah, I know. There's, I mean, you can see the bait. I see bait at top. Uh oh. Oh, he got off again. Mark, what are you doing, buddy? Oh my gosh, people. Y'all just don't know how tough this bite is. It is really tough, and uh, well, that guy just kind of scooped up my lure and started swimming with it. I didn't feel him, so I tried to set that hook. I mean, well, y'all saw it. 
it looked like a nightmare kind of like a train wreck so bad you just can't turn your head away from it gotcha I don't know oh yeah we got us a nice size flounder holy moly get over here come on oh yeah this guy please don't break my heart oh god y'all know what i'm thinking catch and cook tough days like this you gotta do the catch and cook so uh, y'all get to see me catch a fish and then you're gonna see me eat it that's kind of cruel i know <laughs> oh my gosh that is such a spectacular flounder yeah we're gonna throw him on the boga this guy is going home. All right, work with me now. I'm thinking flounder tempura. Been wanting to do it for a long time. So what I've got right here, all the ingredients laid out. We've got the fresh flounder already filleted no bones whatsoever laying in some paper towels to absorb all of that extra moisture then we've got the tempura uh i really wanted to use like a kikoman something like that type of tempura but i went on a wild goose chase thank goodness heb had this right here so that's what we're going to use then we move over to the zucchini fresh zucchini sliced at three eighths of an inch with a mandolin so that the uh, vegetable itself doesn't get mushy. And then we've got also some yellow squash sliced the same thickness. The mandolin makes things super easy. Then a fresh head of broccoli about the size of my fist. And then I just took all the florets off of the crown. So we got that. Then we move over here. We've got some, uh, what is this, baby bella mushrooms. So we're gonna see how that tastes. And then some pot stickers. These are pork pot stickers bought from HEB. I don't know how to make these things. So I just thought it would be something nice to go with the flounder itself. And then we use some Kikoman stir fry, like mixture to put inside. And uh, that is what we're going to do. So this is either gonna be epic or an epic fail. I don't know because I fried flounder once before and it didn't turn out so good. So y'all wish me luck. Here we go. We'll start things out with one teaspoon of sesame oil. Just coat the bottom of our pan with that. We'll get this saute process going. Let's throw the mushrooms in. And now the one tablespoon of soy sauce around one eighth a cup of water. I forgot to throw in the fresh garlic. So that's another ingredient that I purchased. You gotta get that stuff in there before this completely cooks. We don't want them mushy. We just want them nice and soft, perfect. Get that garlic down there at the bottom mixed in with everything so it can just marinate inside this little medley of vegetables. Doesn't that look really good? We're gonna add some of this stir fry sauce right here. Looks like maybe half a cup. That should be good enough right there. Just stir that around, mix it. I know there's no substitute for freshness as far as the ingredients, the sauces and stuff like that that you make, but I have not one ounce of Asian blood in my body. So I gotta go with the Asian style sauce right there. Oh, you know what I'm missing? Oyster sauce, that stuff is good. Whenever I make uh, mushroom chicken, I use a lot of that oyster sauce in it and it's absolutely delicious. I know oyster sauce sounds so disgusting. Okay, so let's uh, put this heat down to low. We just want it to stay warm. There we are. There's our vegetable medley right there. Let's go super high. We're gonna start it out at 400 and then as we, uh, oh my gosh, as we get up to temperature, then I'm gonna lower it down to about 375. That should do. I wanna make sure I have enough to thoroughly cook the flounder in one shot. For the tempura, we're gonna take the entire package 
dump that inside our bowl. Now, because I want some season, like a little bit of taste to it, I'm gonna throw some Cajun seasoning in there. This is just blackened seasoning. I'm gonna put about a, ta a teaspoon of this stuff. I love it. So let's get that measured out. A whammo, that goes inside there. Should give it a really good taste. At least I'm hoping it will. We're gonna mix that around. All right, hopefully this is gonna work now. Two teaspoons of blackened seasoning to the tempura. Let's mix that around. Now it's getting a little bit of color. And I can smell it too, so good to go. Next thing, you're supposed to put three quarters of a cup of ice cold water. So I measured out three quarters of a cup of water and then I threw the ice in it. So let's strain the ice. Let's just add that. We're just gonna mix that around. It says it's supposed to be lumpy. I know the batter just from watching other people use tempura to cook. The batter looked pancake-like in uh, consistency. This is not pancake-like. All right, after reading, I was supposed to put uh, one and a quarter cups of water, so I gotta chill this down really fast. Let's go ahead and start putting that inside there. Now let's see if that consistency is gonna change. It should most definitely change. That's the consistency that I was looking for. So there we go. Batter is done. Let's try to let it set just for a little bit so the bubbles can rise out of it. Now we're gonna take and get our flounder ready. Simple bamboo skewers. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is gonna work. I am just simply amazed. Mark, you are a genius. <laughs> this is what I was really, really scared of. Look at that, it's wanting to fall apart. Please don't fall apart, Mr. Flounder. Don't, buddy, don't. We've got all of the flounder skewers ready to go. Look at that. Doesn't it look awesome? Okay, first one is going in the pan. Y'all wish me luck, everyone. Get in there, come on. Get in there, hot shot. There you go. The first skewer has been going for approximately three minutes. Let's see what that guy looks like. Oh yeah, that looks nice, golden brown. Look at that right there. Oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> I'm super excited that this worked. So now what we're gonna do is load up all these other little crispy, or soon to be crispy critters inside there. These guys are done. They've been cooking for about three minutes. And there's the star of the show, some golden crispy flounder. I am completely amazed that it worked. Look at that. I mean, that's just golden perfection right there. And the moment we've all been waiting for. So here we go. I've got Christian here with me as well. Uh, first time ever trying this. It is like the majority actually Almost all of my creations are just spur of the moment things that I thought up in the head and just like, hey, let's just give it a shot, right? Right. Here we go, tempura flounder. Let's see what it's gonna taste like. It's decent. It's fried fish. Yeah. Pretty good. Sticks to the wood a little. I know, that's exactly what I was thinking. So. Three minutes, that's what the instructions said, but the flounder has stuck to the bamboo skewer. You cannot put water in the skewers in order to uh, prevent that from happening. Maybe I could have rubbed some peanut oil on those skewers and that probably would have helped to keep the flounder off of it. I don't know how that's gonna work. Look at that, oh God, no. Yeah, I probably a super small piece. But. Yeah, probably you should just eat it straight off the skewer so it doesn't look like this. Try it with the uh, stir fry here. If you're a flounder lover, you're probably gonna like this dish. It's not really bad at all. It just has no flavor. Even adding the uh, two teaspoons of blackened seasoning, it didn't help it to like flavor it at all. If you eat it with the uh, stir fry, it's pretty good. So with the stir fry. Next I'll try with soy. Is this soy sauce, right? No. What is that? Yoza. Oh. Ooh. It no. Absorbs, it absorbs it a lot. It absorbs a lot. It's really, you just get too much of that. Too much of it? 
Here, let's them. try it with the yoza sauce. The yoza sauce is supposed to be for the pot stickers. It's just, it's like a sponge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't I recommend really using like yoza sauce with the tempura flounder. Overall, it's okay. You should home make these with fish inside. Fish dumplings? Yeah. Is that a thing? Fish dumplings? Leave a comment down below. It's really not a dumpling. Pot sticker. Pot sticker, dumpling. Maybe we had some sriracha mayo to season the, yeah, the flounder the tempura. Sriracha mayo over there. Then I think, you know, kind of like the way you go to the grocery store or the sushi houses, um, you can get a, a glaze or some type of a sort of flavoring on top of this. It's definitely not bad. It's not bad at all. So from a like a, a number scale, one to 10, this is probably gonna get a six. six, yeah, it, six because it just lacks the flavor. That's all, it's not the flounder's fault. So poor fella, rest his soul. Thank you for providing us with substance. Uh, I just didn't season the fish at all. But again, you fish lovers out there who just like a purist, the way I am with steak, I can't stand using any kind of sauce or anything like that. I just like salt and pepper on my steak and that's it. That's probably what I should have did to the flounder before dipping it inside the tempura. All right, everyone. That's gonna do it. I wanna thank each and every one of y'all for tagging along on today's adventure. Because of y'all, the love and support that you show by watching these videos, especially all the way to the end right now, I'm able to sit here and do what I do. To create this video, it took a lot of money. I want to say probably about 60 something dollars from the gas, getting out there, fishing, the lures, buying all the ingredients, especially the ingredients. Peanut oil is not cheap. That's why I say thank you so much. So just giving you a little peek behind the red curtain and letting y'all know how much your support means to me. Dropping the comments down below, it fuels me to continuously do these videos. I've got a bit more flounder to eat, so I'm gonna just chow down. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, tight lines, y'all. I just had higher hopes because the tempura looks so freaking good. Yeah, it looks good. I think if you did, like how they do it at home, um...